Thank, thanks, Chairman, and uh, thanks to the Marine Institute for inviting us to address this truly Im impressive conf conference here over the last couple, couple of days. Unfortunately, couldn't make yesterday myself, but uh, I, I gather talking to colleagues who, who were here that it was equally as impressive as today. So, as the Chairman says, Robert McCabe, I'm the Director of Operations and Navigation at the Commissioners of Irish Lights. Um, what I'm hoping to, to achieve in the presentation today is just to provide some food for thought on the potential of the aids to navigation infrastructure and network around the coast of Ireland to, to, to enable what I think were the teams I picked up this morning here, collaboration and data availability. And we have a network out there around the whole coast of the island of Ireland that we, we, we believe can certainly do that. So I'm going to describe those coastal assets that we have out there. And I then want to take some time to describe a demonstrator project that we're establishing in Dublin Bay, which we'll see as a microcosm of what could be achieved on the coast in general, and I'll move on to that shortly. I love to think that it wasn't necessary to tell people who the Commissioners of Irish Lights are, but unfortunately for the first few hundred years of our existence, we were sort of a quiet op operation that worked away in the background, so it probably is necessary to give a little bit of explanation here today as to who we are and what we do, but I'd hope maybe that if I was back here in a couple of years' time that that wouldn't be necessary, that we'd be so well known as one of the providers of data and a data hub around Ireland that people would be saying, oh, that's Irish Lights, we know who they are. However, we're the General Lighthouse Authority, so our purpose in life is to provide marine aids to navigation, and there's three GLA, or General Lighthouse Authorities, for the UK and Ireland. There's ourselves, who cover the island of Ireland, there's Northern Lighthouse Board, who cover Scotland and the Isle of Man, and there's Trinity House, then, who cover England and Wales. And we're all funded from a General Lighthouse Fund, and we all work very closely together, although we are three separate organisations. The General Lighthouse Fund gets its funding from light shoes and shipping, so uh, a direct uh, charge on the industry. It gets a subvention from the Irish government, which is one of the reasons that I'll be talking in a moment about the added value that we feel we should give back for that. And then some commercial income that the GLA generate from, from uh, resources that, that, that we need to provide the aids to navigation, but in which we have some spare capacity. And you can think principally perhaps of the ships, the Grania Whale in our case, but also lighthouse tourism, providing uh, antennae and, 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 and other systems on, on, on lighthouses, and generally exploiting that resource that we have to provide anyway. So if we look then at what we have around the coast, uh, we, 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 we have three duties under the Act. We provide general aids to navigation. We superintend and manage all the local aids to navigation. So even, even though we, we, we provide maybe 300 aids to navigation ourselves, we superintend and manage some 4,000 out there that are provided by local authorities, by harbour authorities, by wind park operators, and indeed by aquaculture developers, which is the, the more difficult area, I think, to, to, to manage for ourselves at the moment. And then our final duty is, if there's a dangerous wreck outside of a harbour area, it's, it's, it's our duty to work with the person who owns the, the vessel, obviously, to make that safe, either by marking it, by removing it, or by, by dispersing it on, on, on the bottom. So, to achieve all that, we have a network of aids to navigation out there. We have, as you can see there, 72 lighthouses, some 120 almost boys, beacons, and then a number of radio aids to navigation. I'll talk a little bit, a bit about each of them uh, as, as we move through. I suppose to focus initially on the boys, if you think of those 120 boys that we provide out there, and we've got another 25 we provide on contracts. So there's 145 platforms sitting out there in the ocean, of which only three of them at the moment have any level of sensors on them beyond the immediate aids to navigation requirement. So if we, if we think of that, 142 platforms sitting out there around the coast of Ireland, virtually sensor ready, and that's one of the messages I think we need to deliver today, that we can get added value from this network, from these aids to navigation, by fairly minor adaptation of them to provide sensors. And I'll, I'll talk later about the three that have sensors, but when I say sensors, it really is you can place any sensor on it once you can meet the power requirement on the buoy. And a lot of our buoys have the scope because they're quite large buoys. The nature of where they are is they're large steel buoys and they have the scope to add power to them. If we think then about lighthouses, we have 72 lighthouses out there around the coast. These are, I suppose, a sample. If you look on the top left, you have Inish Tirith out in the Blaskets, the, the, the most westerly part of Ireland. 
uh, an offshore rock with a major lighthouse on it. Uh, the one on the top right, Rockabill, up off Skerries in the Irish Sea. Uh, Cromwell Point down at the entrance to Valencia in the bottom left. And then Fannet Head up on the northwest coast at the entrance to, to, to Loch Swilly. So lighthouses, as I say, 72 of them around the coast, not all large towers, but all certainly capable of being adapted to alternative uses beyond the aid to navigation use. So if I just tell you why I think we're at the right time for this, that's Bull Rock Lighthouse down again off the west coast. If you carry out past Jersey Island, you come to the, the cow, the calf and the bull. And all of the infrastructure you see there in the lighthouse and in the dwellings and in various landings around it is surplus to our requirements for aids to navigation. We don't need it for an aid to navigation anymore. The image that you see on the right hand side of the slide is two VLB 92 lanterns with a Raycon on top and an AIS unit down to, to the bottom right of that, that, that uh, stainless steel structure. And that can provide the aid to navigation. The rest of it's surplus in terms of aid to navigation, but could have a range of uses in terms of, of, of sensor platforms, in terms of monitoring, in terms of security, in terms of radar sites. And I suppose it's a good time to mention that we think of the lighthouses looking outward from the coast, but of course a number of our stations also look inward onto the coast. So you, you, you can think of a number of applications where that's of value. And that's the added value that we're trying to promote, I suppose, at the, at the moment. So if we just briefly talk then about our radio aids, aids, aids navigation, just three samples. We, we, we have three differential GPS stations around the coast with large masts uh, at those stations because we use them to uh, receive and then transmit on, on, on 300 kilohertz the uh, differential beacon signal. And people will understand uh, the beacon signal is required for integrity pur purposes uh, uh, to, to, to track any erroneous data in the satellite feed. Also gives a little bit of extra accuracy. But um, it does also give us that opportunity of having those antenna and those stations around the coast. You can't see it on the left-hand image, but on the, my right-hand image you can see the, the, the Raycon, which is a radar aid to navigation. Again, we have 22 of those around the coast on various buoys and lighthouses. Raycons are adapting to more modern, new technology radars, and there's real opportunities there for a, a, a additional use of Raycons. And then finally, in the bottom right of that slide, the AIS unit that we have fitted on about 80 of our aids to navigation at the moment and, and a, a, another 50 or more to go. ATON AIS, uh, Automatic Identification System, is proving itself to be a very useful aid to navigation for the mariner and for safety at sea, but also a very useful data communications channel for us around the coast. So we're bringing signals back from these AIS-enabled boys to the shore using the coastal AIS network to, to bring it back to our monitoring center in Dunleary. And then we can provide that information in practically any format that a user might require it. And that's one of the things that we use to bring back the Met Hydro information that I'm going to describe now, now shortly. That's just an overview again, not so good on this one, better on the one on my right, of the DGPS stations. We're a bit pushed for time, so I'm not going to talk you through them. But it's an example again of collaboration. It's 14 differential GPS beacons around the coast of Ireland and the UK, provided by the three general lighthouse authorities as a single network with various far field and near field monitors and control stations attached to it. That gives overlapping coverage up to 50 miles offshore around the whole coast of Ireland and the UK. A reminder, I suppose, as to where we all work. This is Eagle Island up off the, the, the Mayo coast, 69 metres up to the, the focal plane of the light in the lighthouse there, and yet we get water and wave damage in that walled uh, lighthouse compound. And we've, we've recently adapted that, that lighthouse uh, to a VLB 92 solution as well. But it's a reminder, I suppose, that anything you put out off the coast of Ireland or on the coast of Ireland needs to be marinized, needs to be robust, needs to be ready to accept the challenge of that weather. And of course, from our own point of view, because some of this is selfish, it's about aids to navigation, that's, that's the weather the, the user is outside in, that's the weather we have to provide the aids in, and it's the weather that our sensor network has to survive in as well. If I move on to what we came to talk about, because I see the chair moving, um, the Dublin Bay Digital Diamond, we have started this, this project, as I say, as a microcosm of what we believe is possible around the entire coast. 
the, the digital diamond element of it, I suppose, comes from that. What we want to do is, is, is to provide good quality communications and, and data channels across Dublin Bay and to show how we can do that then on the coastal periphery around the rest of Ireland because while Irish Lights is headquartered in O'Leary, our work and our stations are right around the coastal periphery and, 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 and that's where our organisation is truly based. So we've four stations there, we've one at our, our own headquarters in O'Leary one out on the Kish Lighthouse out, out in Dublin Bay, one at the Bailey in Holt, and one in cooperation with Dublin Port at the Dublin Port Operations Centre. Our initial aim is to put Wi-Fi wi stations onto those locations to provide a broadband Wi-Fi coverage over the bay and to use that then to build the various sensor networks that we would hope that people in this room and beyond will collaborate with us on. So I suppose that's why I have the next slide first because to us, this is all about collaboration. We know what Irish Lights wants. We, we, we have our vision as to how this network would operate. But the real richness from this project will come from collaboration with partners. So we have a small outreach team of colleagues of mine, Steve Burrows and, and, and Deirdre Lane, who have been out talking to quite a number of this, these partners about how we would like to work with them, what we would hope to get from them. I don't for a moment suggest that all these people are signed up in any, in, in any way, but quite a number of them are, and quite a number of them are, are anxious to become involved. If your name's not there, don't be too concerned. If your name is there and we haven't spoken to you, don't be too, too concerned. It, it, it's a process that we're building at the moment, but we have um, initially at least installed those, 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 those Wi-Fi stations to, to, to give the initial coverage. If you're interested in collaborating with it, certainly talk to myself or my colleague John Burke, who's our, our Director of Technology and Data Services down there. Stick your hand up there, John, so people see it. There you go. Save, save, save me dealing with, the, with all the technical queries. So, it really is, it's a project where we believe collaboration is at the base of it. We, we set some output targets for ourselves in it, and, and the first of those is really to get that technical advisory group of partners up and running, and that's why we've been out talking to people individually, but hope to get the group together sometime before the end of the year. The testing of those key communications components, we have, we have the Wi-Fi system out there, it should deliver somewhere between 50 and 100 meg. We're certainly getting 50 meg coverage reliably from it at the moment. And then there's things we can do straight away. We use virtual AIS to, uh, as an aid to navigation. If one of our aids is damaged or knocked off station, as the Dublin Bay Boy was about two years ago, we can establish a virtual aid to navigation on that site that the Mariner can use, even though there's no physical aid present. So in cooperation with Dublin Port, we'd hope to use that for, for, for some traffic management by putting out some virtual aids to navigation on the entrance gates to, to, to Dublin through the traffic separation scheme. The Met Ocean and data provision we see as one of the real core services for ourselves in, in this demonstrator. We, we, we're, we're already already doing it, and I'll show you some data very shortly, down at this Splaw Boy on the southeast of Ireland at the entrance to Ross Lair, at the Conning Beg Boy down off the Waterford River, and at the Ballybunion Boy in the entrance to the Shannon. But we have, we have a plan from, from our own perspective to roll that out further. Uh, the data that we, we presently provide is wind speed and direction, wave height and period, and sea temperature. Um, they're key data, obviously, for our user group, but as we collaborate on the project, I've no doubt people will come forward and say, well, why not this sensor, why not that sensor? Quite often the maintenance of the sensor is the issue rather than the, the, the initial establishment of it. So the social media proof of concept, we did social media boy, uh, the Twitter boy as we were calling it, and once I don't fall into copyright issues there, but I call it a social media boy now, uh, during the Volvo race in Galway, we put these sensors on a very large boy in Galway Bay, and we transmitted it via Facebook, via Twitter, along with some extraneous information as well. But it seemed to catch a lot of attention. We've had a number of requests from groups in, particularly in the fishing industry, about providing that data. And I, 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 was, I was very interested in the pre pre presentation earlier by Suzanne on, on, on Niracuz, because it was very like what we believe is the value of that. It's about the sale, no sale decision. It's about having data from a boy that in weather terms is a number of hours to the west of you and being able to see that data and say, if the weather's like that there, now is the time for me to get back in. So it's important safety data, but we do see it as, as something that can broaden out in, in, into the wider uh, maritime community that, that, that's here today. The user equipment assessment is about, in our case, getting on the ships and seeing what the ships are using and, and, and how, how that can be developed. 
GNSS denial assessment and response is very important to us. There's, we all use it. We, we, we recognize that the primary aid to navigation on most of the ships out there is, is, is a GPS. It's the primary aid to navigation when you're coming up in your car and trying to find the Titanic Center in a hurry this morning, I can tell you. But it, it, it is a, a system that, 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 that is very vulnerable to, to, to blocking, and we believe that's going to come more and more. This will be a part of our trial. Not necessarily, people will hear a lot about Ila Ran, I suspect. Ila Ran is one solution, it's a very good solution. But we want to test more robust solutions, um, or more localised solutions, shall I say, in this trial as well, around ranging mode from other digital signals. It's a part of the trial we initially saw being in one of the later phases, but again, through collaboration, through talking to, to NUIM and people up there, we, we found a partner who, who could help us with this and perhaps bring it forward. We're going to publish a, a, a news um, both on, 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 the, on the internet and in hard copy about this trial to try and bring in the user community as widely as we can. And of course, at the end of phase one, we review, we see where we are, we see if we've got the right partner base, and we move on to phase two. Phase two is, is about trying to harden up the services within the demonstrator to make sure that Wi-Fi service is delivering the, the best for the various partners in it. We, we, we certainly intend to, to get some, some cameras, images in there that are important to Dublin Port. And can you do that on a buoy? Do you do it from a lighthouse? How, how, how do you do it? We want to trial that out and, 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 and produce a service that brings value. Now, I don't for a minute pretend, I said, I said to somebody, I think in one of the coffee breaks we, we were discussing uh, about innovation, a, a lot of this is happening elsewhere. Of course it is, and you, you can go on the web and you find information on it. But we don't seem to be doing it in Ireland, certainly at the moment, in a coherent manner. And what we want to do here is, is to collaborate with people and try and deliver that. As I said earlier, there's a selfish side. The International Maritime Organization is about to implement e-navigation. We want our services, as they always have been, to be at the fore of that process and producing the best for our users. But we really do believe the network that's out there around the coast that, that, that's underutilized in this regard at the moment is a real resource for people. The chairman is really moving now. I'm going to press on. Uh, the, the phase three, we believe, is about consolidation and formalization of the services. I take the point from SMEs this morning, there has to be a value at the end of this to some people, and we see those services formalized in that way. That's, uh, I, I'm always indebted to John Joyce for that cartoon of what the, uh, the, the Twitter boy in Galway looked like with its various sensors. And um, more realistically, this is what we, we, we get out of it, as I say, wind speed and direction, gust speed, Wind, 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 wave height and the wave period and that data again is data that we make available freely to the users and people then may analyse it to their own benefit. Thanks Chairman. How do I do? <laughs>